Hello, baseball fans, and welcome. We've got baseball on the show. It's the mid-century groundbreakers and the long ball beasts. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Just about to get underway. Today's starting pitcher, Roy Halladay. Try to stay back for that power changeup. Speed differential between the fastball and the changeup is huge. Hitters, they have a hard time staying back. Here's the veteran second baseman, Jackie Robinson. Next yeah, pitch is outside. Out. On the ground to third. The throw to first. One out in the top of the first. Now let's have a look at the legends up and down the lineup for the mid-century groundbreakers. They're dealing with a top-level arm on the mound, so this figures to be a tough matchup for them. What's the key to the offense today, Singy? Well, Boog, I think when you got a guy that's this talented on the mound, you've got to find ways to disrupt his rhythm, make him uncomfortable a little bit. The guys that can handle the bat and perhaps you know, bunt, bunt for a base hit, get him moving off the mound. If you're in the box and he seems to be just in a flow, step out, mess up his timing, somehow try to get in his head a little bit, and then when he does come in the zone, you may only get one pitch. You better not miss it. Next Ball, offering is outside. And Singy, as a team, you need to make the most of the very few opportunities he's going to give you, right? Absolutely. And, and you, don't, you don't get to guys like this a lot of times early. Once they really settle in, it's going to be the later innings that they hand that ball over to a reliever if they do at all. Here's some real power at the plate. Willie Mays. That one ripped right center field. And no one can get there. Around first and hustling for second. And that's a double. Man in scoring position with two away. And here's the veteran outfielder, Hank Aaron. Just missed. Well, here's a chance right here for one of the better hitters on this roster to get him on the board in the first. Thanks to the three-hole hitter extending the inning good at bat with two outs. Mays stands at second with two gone. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Here comes a pitch. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. Fights it off. He'll see another. Swinging for the strikeout. Had him out front for strike three. Well, this guy competes hard. We see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam. Back here with my pal Siggy. Getting the nod in this one. Martin Digo. When he's on, Boog, he's really fun to watch. He takes the pressure off entire lineups, and typically, he doesn't need a ton of runs in support. No one should be surprised if he settles in and takes full control of this game. That's what he's looking to do, for sure. Here's the veteran shortstop, Derek Jeter. Fouled off. He was late.
swing and a line drive base hit out of the center field. So a man on base to start the inning. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side. And the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Bernie Williams. Line drive to short and caught. That is good. Our third baseman. All right, let's check out the imposing lineup for the long ball beasts. And with their ace on the mound today, they're just looking to provide him a little bit of run support, and they'll see what they can do for him. Boog, you have to be really careful when you've got a guy like this on the mound for you to not become a spectator. You know that he doesn't give up a whole lot, but sometimes guys get a little too comfortable and don't have an urgency to score runs. You have to make sure you put him in a situation where he can get the W, but also you guys can cruise to the finish line and not have to worry about a comeback in the end. Eagle throws the first. Hey. Jeter back on a dive. Man at first, one away. Here comes the pitch. Runner breaks for a second. To the right side. Yeah. Steps on first for the out. That's a good piece of hitting right there. The job was to move the runner up and give your team a chance to score the go-ahead run. That's exactly what happened. So you better believe your teammates are happy with you after that at bat. So now it's the four-hole hitter, Mark McGuire. Here's a 1-1. Digo, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the game, and that certainly is a benefit to him when he's in a spot like this. Good job to fight that one off. Runner at second, two down. Rip to third. Zips it across, and that's the inning. End of one, and we're still scoreless. at Globe Life Field. Second inning set to go. Here's the veteran first baseman, Lou Gehrig. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. And a ground ball to first. He steps on the bag and quickly one away in the second. The shortstop, Ernie Banks. Stepping in, the slugging shortstop, Ernie Banks. The shortstop takes the ball. Way to lay off that fastball up right there. You're looking for something you see well that you can handle, but you also have to keep the discipline so that you're not popping up pitches that are just a little too high. One out, base is empty. And that's too that high. Down. Ball four. Batting seven. The catcher. Man at first with one gone. Josh Gibson stepping in now. The pitch. Off the mark there. Two balls, two strikes. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Second inning here, no score. In the air, center field. Williams drifts towards it, pulls it down, and there's two gone. That is it. The left field. 
And now it's going to be Ralph Kiner. Chris, baseball today, so many strikeouts, and they are available to pitchers. But this is a guy that puts the bat on the ball and is kind of different from the players that we see day in, day out. Bounce to the left side. Tosses to first, and they take care of Kiner for the out. And that is the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Back in Arlington, stepping in, David Ortiz. The designated hitter, David Ortiz. to the mound tosses to first and a quick out number one batting fifth the right fielder larry. now it's the veteran outfielder larry walker <laughs> lifted in the air right field hank hauls it in to away Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it. So up next, Ryan Broad. And that's off the inside edge. Two and one. That's down and in. Joe Mauer in the on deck circle. Two down, nobody on. And he pumps in a strike. So the ball really well today. That two seam fastball has got good run on it. Excellent job of moving it around the plate. On the ground to third. Slings it across. Gets him easily, ends the inning. Nothing doing here this half. We play two full. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. And we're back. On to the third inning. Now the third baseman, Eddie Matthews. Eddie Matthews. Here's a 2 1. Swings through that one out in front that time. He got away with one there, but he knows he can't go into that spot very often against a guy like this. Got him. What away. Well, a big power guy right there and generating so much bat speed, it's hard to bring that to a halt once you've committed. They tried to check the swing, just couldn't do it. So digging in, Jackie Robinson. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. So a man aboard now with one away. Digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Mickey Mantle. The pitch. And there's a foul ball. And the one two misses to even the count. Top of the third, no score. Wouldn't chase that time. But Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. Righty to the plate. 
Swing and a miss. Had him out front for strike three. Got away with that curveball, no doubt about it. It passed right through the heart of the strike zone, and he just couldn't get the bat on it. When you strike out on one like that, that's when you start having conversations with yourself, and they're not usually very friendly. And next is the designated hitter, Willie Mays. Two outs. Fastball for a strike. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now, doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens. That one not close. Two and two. Bounced up the middle. Flips it. And very nicely done for the out. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. No score. As we go to the last of the third, and now the veteran catcher, Joe Mauer. This is a guy who is very highly regarded defensively. Fun to watch him control stuff behind the plate. Good game caller. Good at framing, but it's that big arm that really stands out. And that one is inside. You come into the game knowing that unless the ball's in the dirt or gets by him, we're probably not going to steal anything today. So that's where you want to get a little more aggressive on yourself. Oh, now this ball is driven into the left center field gap. Into second easily with a leadoff double. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. I love the approach he had right there with that pitch. Not trying to do too much, but still looking to drive it, and that's exactly what he's able to do into the opposite field gap for the double. Runner in scoring position now, and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Here's the second baseman, Chase Utley. The 1-1. One -one. Right through there for a strike. And a ball and two strikes. Swing and a drive. Deep right field. That's back there. Gone! The two-run shot. It's 2-0. That's a great way to fire up this crowd. They're feeling it now. Just an excellent swing all the way around, and it had that sound coming off the bat that gets everyone's attention. Got a pitch to drive, short to the baseball, squared it up, and the backspin carried it out of here. The batter will be the shortstop, Derek Jeter. Digo comes to the plate. Liner, and that should be extra bases. And that rolls into the corner. Safely into second. He's got a double. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night. And just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. So, man aboard. Here's the center fielder, Bernie Williams. Digo kicks and delivers. 2 1. There's a high chopper. And no throw for some reason as he reaches first. That's got to be an error. Here's the third baseman, Adrian Beltre. Yeah. 
Swings through the fastball up in the zone. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. Still a one and two count. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. Headed for the plate. He'll score. It's three zip. They are really feeding off each other. That's five hits in a row. To me, it's just a really controlled, balanced swing. He wasn't trying to do too much with it. Just stayed disciplined, got the barrel to the ball, and put it in play. Stepping in the long ball threat, Mark McGuire. And the right-hander deals. Foul ball there. Righty delivers. Fouls it off. Still one and two. Flew open a little bit with that front shoulder, but was able to slow his back down just enough to make contact with that pitch. Keep the bat alive. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Now it's the DH, David Ortiz. Ziggy, he's got a history of coming through in the big spots. I know I like to talk about I'm not sure whether clutch actually exists, but you look at the numbers, and this guy always seems to deliver in those spots. The 2-1. And that's in for a strike. Well, I think it's the ability to assess the situation, understanding what the pitcher has, what he's trying to get people out on, and then being able to use the entire field. And another ball. If you're a guy that can only hit to one field, then you're really not going to be able to come through in clutch situations because pitchers are going to adjust. But because he's able to use the entire field, that's why he's so successful in these situations. Over to Jackie. They get one. And that's two. Three runs for him here, and they move ahead. On to inning number four. The Beasts on top here, three to nothing. at Globe Life Field. Now it's the power speed combo. Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron. Right hander kicks deals. That one pushed foul. Another one, two. Hit hard. That gets through. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Seems like he got exactly what he was looking for right there. He wasn't able to elevate it, but he put a great swing on it. Right on time, good, balanced approach, and just blasted it through the infield. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. And that's ball four. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. Now batting the shortstop. So up next, Ernie Banks. And he deals. Ball. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. 
The Beasts leading by three. Top half of inning number four. On the ground a second. Might be two. There's Out. one. Relay to first. Double play. I think four, six, three double plays like that are way tougher than these guys make it look sometimes because no matter how you do it, the feed from the second baseman is a tough one. That's where footwork really comes into play, but right there, very well done. Next to hit, Josh Gibson. Swing and a miss as he was late. One and two here. In the dirt, nice job behind the plate. And the righty deals. Foul ball, another 2 2 upcoming. Two outs. Still two and two after the foul ball. And a pitch. And another ball. Ralph Kiner hoping for a chance. He would represent the tying run. Yeah, Boo, plenty of power in that bat. And they'd love to give him a shot here. Kicks and deals. Out towards right center. That's well struck. And it's a one hopper off the wall. Should be extra bases. He pulls into second. A run comes in on the play. Love how he let that ball travel. Trusted his hands. Nice job of going the other way. And it's second here with two away. Ralph Kiner now at the plate. And here it comes. Ball, that pitch is out. Gibson on its second with two down. Too low, and it's ball three. Eddie Matthews waiting on deck if they extend the inning. Plenty of pop in his bat, so he could give them the lead with one swing if he gets the chance. Man at second. Swing and a foul straight back. And on second, two down. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. Got him. Inning over, and it could have been worse. One run, a pair of hits, no errors, and one left on. We're midway in the fourth. The Beasts out front, three to one. And welcome back to the ballpark. Digging in, Larry Walker. Right side, Robinson. One up, one he down. 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 Now batting, the left fielder, Ryan Broad. Now the left fielder, Ryan Broad. Bases empty, one away. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. That's that one ball. missed.
rocketed out towards right center. Dives. What a play. The back. The catcher. So a great diving catch, and that was only possible because of the route he took to get there, right, Chris? Yeah, StatCast shows us just how efficient that route to the ball was. In fact, that's about as good as it gets, pretty much a direct line to it. And perhaps he was a wide receiver in a different life. I don't know, but, man, great job to hold on all the way through the dive as well. No fumble caused by the ground. That misses the zone. The count now two and two. Hit on the ground to the right side. On to Digo. And that is the third out of the inning. Nothing doing for the offense that time. We're headed to the fifth. The Beasts have the lead. Three to one. Back in Arlington, top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Eddie Matthews. And that's a base hit. So now back to the top of the order. Everything came together perfectly for him right there. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. And stepping in is the speedy Jackie Robinson. And a pitch. Rolled to short. Possible two ball. There's one. Back to first. And that is a double play. A very fast developing play right there. No margin for error. Nice double play on a fast runner up the line. Now here's the switch hitting power threat. Mickey Mantle. Two down. Nobody on. So a foul ball makes it one and two. that one down the line into the outfield base hit and with the inning still alive here comes the heart of the order now that just found a way to slap that ball down the third baseline that's really excellent back control and it kind of goes back to all those drills you see hitters do off the tee where it's placed in different spots that was just nice Mantle, the runner at first with two gone. Two outs. Nope, outside. This one popped up. Foul ground first base side. McGuire makes the grab and that'll end the inning. So no runs on two base hits. No errors and one left on base. Home half of the fifth coming up. The Beasts on top three to one. And we're back. Bottom of the inning. And now Chase Utley. Second baseman. The 1 1. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. 
Chris, we were excited to watch him pitch. This is a little more along the lines of what we we're expecting performance-wise. Yeah, but great pitchers like this, you may get one opportunity in one inning to get to them, to get some runs up on the board. And if you don't take it then, you may see zeros the rest of the ball game. And they'll do it again. Deagle winds and fires. Battling here as he fouls it away. Inside just missed. It's a good take. And a swing and a miss down on strikes. He didn't make it easy for him on the mound, but they still get the strikeout. Not a great curveball there at all, but clearly he wasn't looking for it because it just dropped right into the happy zone, and it looked like, to me, the swing was a little bit late. Tells me he gave up on it early and then just tried to have that emergency hack at the last second to put it in play. Next offering is in for a strike. And there's the ball. And that's awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now. Here's a 2-2. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. The wide to kick the pitch. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. And it's off the wall. In safely with a double, his second of the day. And it's second with one away. Bernie Williams digs in now. And another ball. Two balls, one strike. Next offering in there for a strike. And the count is two and two. Activity in the bullpen. Cy Young, the veteran right-hander, appears to be loosening up. Page getting cranked up as well. Kicks and fires. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there are two down. Well, that event seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three-pitch strikeout. You've got to be better at the plate right there, at least to foul something off, extend that at bat. Now the third baseman, Adrian Beltre. The next pitch misses, and a count two and one. In the air, right field. Sizes this one up. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. All right, we go to the top half of inning number six. Here's a big power threat. Hank Aaron. Next oh, offering awesome. misses, and it's two and one. Talk about the right guy at the right spot. They really need a rally, and this guy is someone you can believe in to find a way to get on base. And a good eye there. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3-1 count. Riding to the plate. That's to third. Jump throw across his body. Leadoff man retired in the sixth. 
Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. And now the first baseman, Lou Gehrig. One down, base is empty. Swing and a miss as he was out front. Fights that one away, still one and two. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. So two down now, and here is Ernie Banks. The Beasts trying to protect a two-run lead. And we're at the top half of the sixth. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. One ball. Meanwhile, two activity in the bullpen. Trevor Hoffman preparing to come on if needed. Miller, a left-hander, also throwing. Two down, nobody on. Up the middle, sneaks through, base hit. Once you get the ball by the pitcher, there's a lot of base hits up the middle, even on ground balls. So a nice job to use that big hole and get himself a hit. And here's the catcher, Josh Gibson. Banks off of first with two away. Right through there for a strike. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score. Outside, and that is ball four. Pitch count's getting up there now, and not saying that's the reason for this walk, but this is the point in the game when every sign of wavering starts to get everyone's attention. So two on with two away. Here's the left fielder, Ralph Kiner. You know, he can move the ball around, add and subtract, get some weak contact at times. So you don't worry as much about him in this situation. Very capable of getting a ground ball and getting out of this little jam. Two on, two outs. Spoils the two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. Ernie on his horse around third. He scores. They trail by one. It's 3-2. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets into a count, the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Roy Halladay is done. Pretty good effort, and he exits with a lead. We'll tell you about the new pitcher when we get back. They bring a young arm out of the bullpen in this spot, Andy Pettit. And this is an important part of this game. Tight score and still a lot of outs to get. So they're looking for a big outing out of them right here to get some critical outs. First and second, two outs. Now a chance for Eddie Matthews. Next one is off the plate. Two balls and a strike. First and second, two down. Way out 
front for strike two. They really need to hang in there with that front side against this left-handed breaking ball. Got him swinging, and he gets the strikeout. Sometimes he wears the emotion on the sleeve, but that's okay as long as he's getting results. And right there, thrilled with the punch out to get out of a jam. Well, we go bottom six. And here's the first baseman, Mark McGuire. And a pitch. And that's downstairs and outside. Pulled down the line. This one hammered, but it's foul. Great swing and solid contact. Just a little too quick. He's got to stay back a little longer. 2-2. Two -two. And a foul ball. He stays alive. at the bender for the strikeout. Well, classic pitch sequencing there to change eye levels for the punch out. That fastball on the pitch before was off. It was very competitive. And that gets you thinking that he might try to climb the ladder. But then the curveball out of that same tunnel just falls off the table and you can't make contact. Next is the designated hitter, David Ortiz. The wind of the pitch. Ball two. And that's down and away. Inside ball four. It feels to me like his time on the mound is running short. Starting to show some signs of fatigue. So we'll see how much longer they let him go. Manager out of the dugout now. And it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Martin Digo departs. And as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. Righty reliever out of the pen, Cy Young. Yeah. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. One down. Now it's the right fielder, Larry Walker. The two on. And a foul ball. One run game, one out, one on. That's down and in. And a payoff pitch. Bows it back with two strikes. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. The left fielder, number eight. Now the left fielder, Brian Broad. And the pitch. Swing and a high fly ball to left. Kiner makes the grab. That is the inning. And welcome back to the ballpark. And now, Jackie Robinson. 
trying to keep good speed off the bases. And a count one and two. Looking to get the tying run on base. In the air out towards right center. Makes the grab one away. So digging in, Mickey Mantle. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. That one fouled off two and two. Well, he gave up on that pitch early, and it ended up staying in the zone. I'm sure he's kicking himself and would like that pitch again. Stuck him out. Pettit got him with a fastball. He had him out in front, which isn't easy to do against a hitter like this, known for using the entire field. Just couldn't sit back long enough on that one. New pitcher now, Rob Nen. Power slider guy, boo. He throws it hard and gets a lot of late movement, so it's tough to pick up. And next is the designated hitter, Willie Mays. Two outs. Swings and misses. And it's one and two. Two down, nobody on. Swings and misses at the breaking ball the dirt. That completes the strikeout, and that'll do it. So they go quietly there, midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. The Beasts lead it three to two. Set for the last half of the seventh, and now the catcher comes up to him, Joe Mauer. Right-handed reliever. Swing and a ball hit out towards left center field. And that'll fall for a base hit. And the leadoff man aboard. Well, that's one of those knocks where you almost expect to get some jabs from your teammates when you get back to the dugout. That ball right there landed in what they call the no man's land, meaning it's not really a spot on the field where you can expect anyone to get to it easily. I mean, it's a tough play going back for the shortstop, but also for the outfielders trying to come in. They've got to go a long way as well. Got it by him for the K. This guy will throw any pitch at any count. 3-2. He goes off speed. Gets the out. So the lineup flips over. Now here is Derek Jeter. The pitch. A big swing and a miss. Action in the pen down there. John Donaldson appears to be getting ready. And I'm sure he's feeling some nerves. This would be his major league debut. Bruce also throwing. The one two. Back up the middle and a base hit. Quick throw back in. Lead runner holds it second with one gone. When you can turn a ball around at 107 off the bat, it's going to make you feel really good inside. If he elevates that a little bit more, it's definitely out of here. So one out with two aboard. And now the center fielder, Bernie Williams. Swing and a miss. And it's one and two. Well, all eyes on the double play ball in this spot. No better way to get out of this inning. Mauer on second. Jeter over at first with one away. That misses the zone. Two and two. The 
the pitch. In the air on the infield. And the infield fly is called. Now batting. Third baseman. Adrian. So first and second with two outs. Adrian Beltre getting ready to hit. And the right handers 3 1. On the ground to the left. Loves it on the dive. And that's a great play for the out. Back at Globe Life Field. Ready to begin the eighth. And now the right fielder, Hank Aaron. Now this guy, a player that, if he gets on base, has the ability to really be aggressive getting around the base paths. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth inning. Down one. Any leadoff base runner really makes this inning a bit more interesting. But now this offense has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just try to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. Andrew Miller will take over here. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect the tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. And now the first baseman, Lou Gehrig. One down, base is empty. That one at 95 missed up top. Two and one. Left hand hitter waits. Hammer on the line, base hit. And that puts the tying run on base. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. That pretty much split the zone down the middle, and those are the ones where you got to make them pay. Looks like we've got a substitution at first. Coming in as a pinch runner, Hottest Wagner. Now it's the shortstop, Ernie Banks. The one-two. Rudder takes off. Swing in the middle. Save at second, and that was not close. Looks like it'll be a pinch hitter, Johnny Bench. And this is a big at bat coming, Boo. Definitely a little added pressure on him here. Lefty continues to work with the closer getting loose in the bullpen. Swings and misses. And that's strike two. With a single base runner because of all the power, they are dangerous to tie this thing up or take the lead. So the tying run at second. And he grounds one to the right side. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. So one hit is all they get. Home half of inning number eight straight ahead. The Beasts out front here, three to two. So remaining in the game defensively, Johnny Bench. He takes over behind the plate to do the catching after entering the game as a pinch hitter. Also into the ball game, Buck O'Neill. He takes over as the new first baseman. Mark McGuire now at the plate. Well, he's always a threat. Reason. Even if this guy is 0 for 3 for the night with three strikeouts, he can come up that fourth time and do damage because he's that good. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. The 1 2. And yeah, that skips in the dirt. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. The pitch. 
This one in the air right field. Reaching for it. Makes the catch. Got to love the over-the-shoulder catch. I tell you what, those are really fun to make. And now the DH, David Ortiz. Late on that fastball. One ball, two strikes. Pitch is in the dirt, and the count is even two and two. Right through there, got him. Two gone now. Bell just couldn't pull the trigger on the fastball right there, and I don't think he was taking it, thinking it might be a called ball or anything. I just think he was flat out frozen. Did not expect that location, in my opinion. Two down, nobody on. Here, the bottom half of the eighth inning. Stays alive. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. We're back. It's the top of the ninth. And there's a new pitcher on the mound, John Smoltz. Now, this is an extremely confident pitcher. He loves the pressure. Actually likes the one-run game better than a comfortable three-run save opportunity because that's when he pitches his best. He's two outs away. Here's the third baseman, Eddie Matthews. The pitch. In the air to left, down the line. He's got it. And that quickly, two away. So they're down to their final out. Now it's the second baseman, Jackie Robinson, trying to close out a one-run lead here at the top of the ninth. They're down to their final strike. Clearly was sitting on a fastball right there and just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle with two strikes. Smoltz is just one strike away. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And that is the ball game. Well, this was a tightly played game. Got a little of everything. Some timely hitting, runs on the board. Key pitching and defense in certain spots. Definitely a fun one to watch. 3-2 the final score. They hang on to win it by a run for Chris Singleton and our entire crew. I'm John Shelby saying so long.
for the Groundbreakers. Two runs, nine hits, no errors. They left eight runners on base. Time of the ball game, two hours and 53 minutes. Thank you for joining us here this evening. We remind you to please drive home safely.